Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. For this video I thought I'd do something that I've seen various other visually impaired bloggers and YouTubers doing over time and that's to show you some of the aids that I use to help me in my day-to-day -day life to make things a bit easier and more accessible. Um, I've mentioned a few of these things once or twice in the past but never really shown them to you in detail so it's high time I did really, um, especially like my sunglasses and my monocular which I've often mentioned in my blog and various other bits and pieces as well that you know I haven't mentioned at all yet. So. Yeah, I hope you find it interesting, hope you find it enjoyable. Let me know at the end as well if there's anything you use um, that I haven't mentioned. And I'll link to some of my other blogger and YouTuber friends as well in the description so you can get an idea of some of the stuff they use because visual impairment is such a wide spectrum that we tend to use different things sometimes. You know, some things will overlap, some things will be different um, depending on what our needs are. So yeah, let's crack on with it. And the first thing I'll show you are uh, my sunglasses. Um, these are green tinted sunglasses um, because I'm very sensitive to glare because of my aniridia. I don't have an iris in my eye so I can't control the amount of light that comes in so I'm too sensitive to just wear ordinary sunglasses. I have to wear kind of special ones. The very first video I actually made on this channel about uh, living with aniridia. I actually had different glasses to this you'll notice. These are new since I moved to London last year. My friend James at the aniridia network had green tinted glasses and was telling me about them. And I thought I'd give them a go. And yes, they do make things a lot easier. So they are called MicroLens X-Wrap Wraparound Eye Shields from the uh, RNIB store. And they're £39.54. Being visually impaired, I can get products without paying the VAT from the RNIB. So it might be even less than that. And yeah, as the name suggests, they wrap around the side of the eye to block in any light coming in from the corners. And they're green tinted. And MicroLens does mean they're for people who suffer from light sensitive migraines to protect them. But even though I don't suffer from those, these are still useful because the green colour basically cuts out a lot of the light spectrum that uh, causes glare. So you know, it just makes things a lot easier, not just in the sunshine, but even when it's cloudy, there can still be glare around. So I'll even wear these then still. So yeah, I think they're quite cool too. They fit nicely and yeah, quite a snazzy look, I reckon. What do you reckon? <laughs> It does make things look green, but not totally. I mean, I can still see colour through it. You know, I can still see that there's a red stop button on the uh, iPhone I'm recording on at the moment. Um, I, yes, I know it is red anyway, but I can actually see it's red. Looking at my computer screen, I can still see uh, the colours. Not quite as vividly, maybe, but, you know, good enough for me to still distinguish colours. So, yeah, they're very, very nice glasses, these. I'm very happy with them. And then the other obvious thing to mention, of course, is... My trusty monocular, my little telescope, um, you know, I've spoken about this a lot on my blog and things. I've often mentioned that I'm using it on a mountain and about. And yeah, it's just basically a telescope. Um, it's got a little rubber ring on the end so it's comfortable against your eye. And then, yeah, you just look through it. And it's basically in two halves in a sense, in that you hold the top half and then you turn the bottom half of it to change the focus. And the more you turn it, clockwise the longer it gets and then if I turn it anti-clockwise it shortens again. It just depends how near or far something is as to how far you turn it. So I'm turning it clockwise now and that's allowing me to see things that are closer to me. Um, so I can now read my computer screen from here. If I want to look at something far away then I'll shorten it and so I can see uh, the door frame now if I do it like that. And yeah, it's just as simple as that, just turning the end just to change the focus. I'm doing it with two hands here. Actually, I've become quite adept at doing it just with one hand. So I hold it slightly differently and actually wrap a couple of fingers around the bottom. I've got my little finger and the next finger on from that holding onto the bottom. So I've got my middle finger resting on the top in the middle. And then I'm just turning the top end then with just my thumb and forefinger. And... Yeah, it's just nice and easy to do when I'm out and about. In fact, I could even hold it like that. You know, just wherever you end up being comfortable with, basically. I just end up turning it with the first two fingers on my hand and just somehow holding the rest of the monocular with you know, the remaining fingers on my hand, basically. It just means I can turn it with one hand and I haven't got to worry about fiddling with it. I can keep a hand free if I'm holding something or whatever. So, yeah, it's, it's come to practice, that. I mean, it's got a bit of string there, so I can hang it around my neck. Um, which is really useful. And I'll use this for all sorts of things, basically. I get a lot of use out of this. When I'm travelling, I'll use it to look at the destinations of tube trains or to find out what platform a train's coming into a national rail station, looking at the departure boards and then trying to find the actual platform in the station. I'll use it for looking at bus numbers when they're approaching as well. I'll use it for looking at street signs or shop names. 
I use it in museums for looking at exhibits and the labels all about them. I use it in the theatre for looking at what's happening on the stage. You know, even if I'm having audio description, the audio description will be telling me what's happening on the stage. So I then know what to look for with my monocular so I can get a close look if I want to. And I'll look at scenery, you know, if I'm out and about just enjoying the scenery. I'll look at flowers close up or all sorts of things. Anything I want to look closer at when I'm out and about, I will use this for. It's really, really handy. And I got this from the Optima Low Vision online shop. They do loads of different types of monoculars and other bits and pieces there too, all sorts of magnifiers and other stuff. But they've got a wide selection of monoculars, spec well monoculars, these are called. And you might find that your local social services or someone like that can give you a monocular as well because they're very common items when you're visually impaired. You know, it might be worth asking your local authority or a local charity maybe, a visual impairment charity, if they know how you can get one of these. But if not, yeah, you can buy them. No, they're not cheap. They're over £100. So the 8x20 on the website is £130.19, which is a lot, but like the sunglasses, it is an investment. It's a good investment. And the only thing I have found really is that eventually after lots and lots of use, this rubber ring bit at the end does come off. It kind of loosens and just comes off, but you can get replacement ones. You can just buy the replacement bit on its own from Optima to replace that with, which is really, really handy. Save spending another 100 quid on a new monocular. So that's great. Just to give you a sense of the variety, though, I have got another one here. I think this used to be my dad's, and I've just kept hold of it um, for no good reason because I don't really use it. But it's quite handy to have around just in case. You never know, I suppose. But it's a lot bigger. It's a lot fatter and longer, as you can see. This new one is much, much bigger, much wider, much longer. But you know, it serves the same purpose. This is 8x30 compared to my 8x20. So it just defines the magnification you get and the distance you can see things with. And yeah, I could use this, but I think the trouble with this is because it's bigger, it's not quite as portable. You know, this little one I've got is very pocket friendly and does the job perfectly adequately for me. So this is just a bit big to carry around. It's fairly heavy, so it's just a case of perhaps going into a shop for you know visual impairments, I don't know, maybe the RIB have stuff like this. I'm just trying them out, see what works best for you. But I like my little pocket one. I'm very happy with that. The other thing that I can use to magnify things with is, of course, a magnifying glass. I don't tend to have to use this very often, to be honest, because I can hold things close enough to read them, but I've got this just in case. It's got a light on it as well. So I'll just turn the light on like that. It's just a switch on the back there. And... Yeah, it's as simple as that, just a magnifier with a light on it. I've had this for years, it's called a Schweizer magnifier, so I don't know if this particular model is still available. It's not very strong, to be honest, but it does the job on the few occasions that I've needed it. So, yeah, just a simple little magnifying glass there. The other obvious thing to mention then is symbol cane. I've done a whole video about using my cane because the fact is I don't use it. <laughs> um, I've got it just in case because I was given it. Um, because I'm entitled to have one, so that's fine. But yeah, I don't use a cane or a guide dog to get around because I just feel I can see well enough not to need one. Um, but it just clips together like that, nice and easily. 85 centimetres is the length. And again, you can get canes in all sorts of different sizes. This is just a symbol cane, so I'll just hold it out in front of me. It's literally, as the name suggests, a symbol cane just to symbolise that I am visually impaired and just to make people aware. But I don't kind of want to draw attention to myself like that in a way. I don't mind people knowing, but... I don't feel I need to carry a cane for that purpose. If I need someone to know, I'll just tell them. It's just handy to have it. You know, if I ever do need it, then I'll use it. But so far, I've just not felt a need to. And then also when I'm out and about, I have various cards I can use for different purposes. Um, the main one I use in London is my Freedom Pass, um, which I've got in an All The Stations wallet. If you've uh, ever followed All The Stations online, then you'll know what this is about. Um, it's got very faded already part of it because I've been using it so often. But yeah, All the Stations is a great railway documentary on YouTube, so go and check them out. But yeah, the Freedom Pass I store within this. It's just got my photo on it and just allows me to travel around London for free. Basically, I can use you know, the Tube and the buses and DLR and even some national rail services to a certain boundary for free. I can't use national rail for a great distance, but there is a map online which shows you how far it can take you outside. When I went to the Harry Potter studio tour, for instance, it got me to Watford Junction. I've been down to Bromley with it, uh, down in the south as well. And if I want to go further afield on the national rail network, then I can use this to get as far as I can for free, kind of on the outskirts of London, and then just pay the remaining fare for the rest of the journey if I want to. So yeah, Freedom Pass is really, really handy. I use it a hell of a lot. It also gives me um, free travel on local buses is all over the UK as well. It doubles up as the um, concessionary bus pass that you can use. There are some limitations in that sense in that you can't use it until like after half past nine in a lot of areas. 
But in London, you can use a Freedom Pass any time to go anywhere, pretty much. You know, there are one or two restrictions here and there, maybe. But generally speaking, yeah, you can just get anywhere with it. It's really, really cool. It's just really opened up my life, made things you know, very easy. You know, it's enabled me to have a lot more independence and confidence, just being able to go out and about, not worrying about money. And yeah, I'm just really grateful for it. It's really, really useful. And of course, the other thing to mention then when talking about Rail travel is the disabled person's rail card, which is basically just a green card that gets me a third off train travel all over the country. So again, that's really, really handy. And you can also take a companion with you as well for that discount because they're acting as your carer, basically. It's really handy to know. You do have to pay for the disabled person's rail card. It is important to point that out. It costs you £20 for a year or £54 for three years. So um, there's a nice saving there if you um, buy it for a three-year term rather than a single year. And then one more on the uh, theme of travel, and that is coach card. It's basically the same deal as the disabled person's rail card, but this is a coach card that gets me a third off National Express coach travel. So I very, very rarely use it because I very rarely use coaches. But on the few occasions I have, it's been very handy to have. The disabled coach card will cost you £12.50 plus £2.50 postage and packing. Um, and that'll last you for a year. So it's £15 basically for a year, which again, if you use the uh, coaches a lot, then it's worth it. I haven't used the coaches at all really these past couple of years. So maybe you could argue it's a waste of money, but I'm quite happy to have it really. It's nice to have it there just in case I do need it really. So yeah, I don't mind having that. I've got various other cards as well though. This one is my local authority registration card, photo card. They basically just gave me the card and said, you know, stick your passport photo in there, which I did, so it's not very tidy. It just basically registers the fact that I'm registered as blind or partially sighted with my local authority. So just a little proof of disability. Yeah, I've just given it when I signed up with social services. I haven't had to actually use it for anything, but it's just nice to know it's there that I've got it. Another card that's proof of disability that, again, I haven't used very often, but can come in handy, is an access card or a credibility card. Yeah, it's just basically another photo card and it has symbols on the bottom basically to denote what sort of disability you have. So I've got a plus one on there to say that, you know, I need a companion if I want to go somewhere. And it's got a braille symbol to denote that I'm visually impaired. It just acts as a convenient proof of disability card rather than having to supply lots of evidence to a venue or something. You can just give them the number of the card and they can just get all your information up on the system. You've already been verified by credibility so they don't need to go for the checks again. So it's, it's quite useful. They've got um, theatres and you know, other entertainment venues listed on the website this can be used at. Uh, the access card will cost you £15 and will last you for three years. Yes, you do have to supply some evidence of your disability, obviously, to get it, but it just means it's a one-time only process. So once you've given them the evidence and they've given you the card to say, you know, you've been verified, you know, you're set then. You know, the other venues won't ask for that when you use this card with a venue that's listed on the website. So, you know, not everywhere uses it, not everywhere accepts it necessarily, but a lot of places do. And, you know, it was quite an easy process to get one, I found. You know, just for the disabled person's rail card as well, to be honest, and the coach card, you may have to supply a little bit of evidence, but I didn't find it particularly difficult. It's quite easy to get them, much easier than applying for benefits. Let's put it like that. It's a lot easier than that. But, you know, you may still need a little bit of help with it. Just have a look at the websites and see what they say, basically. So, yeah, those are very useful cards, all of those. The other thing I've also got here is a radar key, and this basically gives access to the disabled toilets across the UK because they're locked so that nobody else can kind of um, use and abuse them as it were. It's just for disabled people. You can buy this key anywhere. I mean, I got this off, I got this one off Amazon. So they're easy to get hold of. It just makes things a bit easier. You know, if you can just go to a disabled toilet, it's just, yeah, simpler sometimes. I mean, I don't tend to use disabled toilets very often because I'm perfectly capable of using the ordinary gents, um, assuming the signs are good enough and I don't accidentally wander into the ladies, which, you know, I've done once or twice. I think a lot of visually impaired guys will uh, uh, attest to that, that it happens. Basically, it's another nice thing that's just handy to have on my person. And then the other thing to mention to do with travel, one more thing, is uh, the blue badge. Now, my mother and I can't drive, but my mother is eligible for the blue badge, so we've got a blue badge. Basically, this allows you to park in disabled parking bays. Um, just because we can't drive, it doesn't matter. If someone else is driving us somewhere, then they can drop us off in a disabled parking space and use this blue badge because they're transporting us. They can't use it for themselves, but they can use it if they're transporting the disabled person as a passenger. You also get the timer as well, the timer card with a little clock that you can turn around to show what time you arrived at the parking space. That's, again, really useful because Sometimes, you know, parking spaces, especially in somewhere like London, are really hard to come by. And then we have other little gadgets as well. Um, the other obvious thing to mention is um, the Amazon 
Echo Dot that we've got. We've actually got a few of these. I think we're all familiar with the Amazon Echo, aren't we, these days? And there's things like, you know, the Google Home and you know, other devices. You know, I'm not saying this is the best necessarily. This is just the only one we've tried. Um, but we're happy with it. You know, you can ask her uh, the news and the weather and the sport updates, things like that. You can ask her for meanings of words or to look up information of all sorts of things. I know you can get a um, tube lines update service on there. You can have a convert measurements. There's TV guide skills. There's quizzes and there's music. You listen to Amazon Music through it. You listen to Audible books through it. The list just goes on and on. These are relatively new to us, really, to be honest. So we're still kind of learning. But I know there are games you can play on here. I haven't tried them yet, but I should do. So yeah, if there are any skills or games or anything you recommend I should try, perhaps to review, perhaps to even try in a video, by all means, let me know. They're really, really nice little machines, very compact. You can get bigger ones, I know. But yeah, these are really useful. And the other thing you can actually do is call another room in the house. My mother's been able to call me from upstairs in her bedroom when I'm downstairs here. You know, she wants to ask me for something. So it's really handy to have that as a form of communication as well. You know, because I might not hear her if she's shouting down the stairs, if I've got my headphones in or something. I'll know the Amazon Echo's got its little light flashing to know a call's coming in or something. So, yeah, there's all sorts of uses. You know, the more I sit here talking about it, the more I think of. It's just very, very versatile, very, very good. And then the other thing my mum uses is a cube clock. We've got a few of these around the house. Just a little simple talking device to tell you what the time is, basically. This one's actually got a curved back on it. You know, these newer versions are kind of a bit more sleek in design, I suppose, whereas the older versions used to be actual cube shapes. Um, but the front is still, you know, a square. Uh, you've got a speaker on the front. You've got a volume dial on the front as well. And then on the top, you've just got a great big button. And when you tap it, it tells you the time. The time is 11.45 p.m. And then he's got buttons on the bottom for adjusting it as well, for adjusting the time and setting an alarm and things. And there's a big battery compartment there. And you can plug it in as well. And it adjusts automatically. You know, it uses radio signals from the air to adjust the time when the clocks go forward and back. So, yeah, just a nice, simple device. Just so you know what the time is any time, just tap the button, it tells you. Now, another thing my mum uses is a Victor Reader Stream. Uh, this is from Humanware. You can get them from the RNIB as well, but they are made by Humanware, so you can buy it from them directly too, and from other stockists, I'm sure. And yeah, it's just based an MP3 player. You can play Daisy books from the RNIB. That's a special format of books that they use. You can play standard MP3 audio books as well. You can play Audible books on it. You can put music on there. You can put voice memos on there. You can also listen to internet radio and podcasts on it. So it's very flexible. There's lots you can do with it. You can stick a memory card in the top to expand how much you can store on there in terms of books and music and things. So my mum uses a 32 gigabyte memory card so she can store as many books as possible on there. Her books are actually stored across two of those memory cards because she's got so many. So she can swap the cards over if she wants to. And yeah, once you get used to which button does what, it's very easy to use. You know, the buttons can be felt very easily. You know, there's a couple of dots on the five and the rest of the keypad can be ascertained from that. Then the buttons that are separate to the keypad have all got distinct shapes. So it's all very, very tactile, very easy to use. And there is a, an even more expensive version that's got GPS built in, so you can take it out and about with you and find out you know, where you are, where you're going and stuff, but we haven't gone that far. <laughs> yeah, it's just a nice MP3 player, basically. Another thing mum will listen to on that player is the talking newspaper we get from our local authority. A lot of places do this. They basically record an audio version of their local newspaper. Not necessarily every single article, but certainly all the main ones. Um, so we get a CD in the post once a week in a wallet from our local council, which is recorded by volunteers. And they just put some time aside, about an hour a week, just to record you know, the, the main articles in the paper. And yeah, we just get the CD in the post in a wallet and I convert it you know, into MP3 in iTunes and stick it on on Victory to stream and then basically we can chuck the CD away but we send the wallet back then you, you turn the address over in the wallet so that it's got their return address and just goes back it's all done under articles for the blind I think so it's all free postage and yeah it just means we get the news from the local area every week which is really really good you know it's really nice that people put their time aside to do things like that I know funding and time is difficult finding the right people to do it isn't always easy, so it's just great that anyone's making the effort. And it'd be nice if more areas had talking newspapers, because I know not everywhere does. Well done to the people who do those. You're fantastic. And another thing in terms of audio that I like to use and mum likes to use is audio description. I've mentioned this in various places before. I've done a whole video about it in the past as well. Basically, audio description adds descriptive narration in the quiet parts of shows where if there's music going on, you can't see what's happening. Basically, when there's nobody speaking in the program, then the audio describer will often come in and just say what's happening on the screen. And it works in the theatre and the cinema as well. You get audio description for films, and I use it a lot in the theatre as well. So 
yeah, audio description is not a gadget as such. You do use gadgets to receive it, maybe. I've used like headphones supplied by Vocalize. I've used my mobile phone in a couple of instances before as well. Or you can just get it through the TV. So yeah, audio description is really, really useful. And another form of description that's worth mentioning as well, on the internet, you can use alt text to describe your images. So if you're flicking through Twitter or something, you can have your images described to people. If you're doing a blog or a website, you can add an alt text um, attribute to the image that you post just to give yeah, some description to visually impaired people. So regular people won't see the description, but anyone using a screen reader will and they'll hear it. So on Twitter you can turn the option on if you go into the settings. On accessibility there's an option to compose image descriptions and you just basically tick that and then whenever you post an image to Twitter it gives you an extra option to add a description in the box. And if you use other services that post to Twitter on your behalf like Buffer or something they are sometimes give you the description option as well. So yeah, it's really useful. It's a, it's a pity you have to kind of turn it on at all really. It's just it'd be nice if it was just enabled by default. You, know, you shouldn't have to choose whether to add a description or not. It should just be there as an option at all times because a lot of people don't turn it on because they don't realise it's there. I think there are ways of doing it in Facebook as well. I think you can add alt text to images sometimes or a lot of the time people just put the description in the body of the uh, text of the post, basically. You just perhaps put it in square brackets or something to distinguish it from the rest of the status. Same with Instagram, there isn't an option to add image description, but you can add it as part of the text of your post. If you're on a you know, blog site like WordPress or something, then when you upload an image, there'll be an, an option to add alt text. So yeah, just please do it. It doesn't have to be a long description, just a brief kind of description of the image and what's in it. Um, you know, Don't go overboard with the detail, just something that gives a general idea of what's happening in the image. It just makes life a lot easier for visually impaired people. Um, I will link to a video by uh, Thinking Out Loud, the wonderful Sassy uh, on her Thinking Out Loud channel has made a video about this. So I will link you to that. And in terms of other little things around the house that are worth mentioning, one thing we use a lot is bump-ons. They're basically little sticky raised dots you can stick on things. For instance, we have bump-ons on the cooker so that mum can feel where different numbers are around the dials. We won't put them on every single number, but perhaps on you know every third number or something like that, just so she knows that certain bump-ons represent certain numbers, and then she'll know that the number next to the dot is the you know, next number above or below it, basically. And then similarly on the washing machine, we use bump-ons on there as well, so mum knows what setting she's put the washing machine at. It actually took a while to find a decent washing machine that we could do that with, in fact, and an oven for that matter, because when we moved in last year, uh, we needed a new washing machine and an oven. But uh, it's common these days for a lot of them to have touch screens, you know, so it's all flat on the surface, so you, you can't you know, see them, and some of them might use phone apps, but mum doesn't use a phone. So... Yeah, you're very, very limited as to what you can find in the shops these days. But you know, luckily, we, you know, we had a good look around and we were able to find models of cooker and washing machine with dials on. They're just a bit harder to find these days. So, yeah, we've got nice big dials on the cooker and the washing machine's got nice big dials on it. And the dial actually clicks round as well. So you can kind of feel the click to each number, which is quite useful. We also got a new microwave as well. Again, a lot of them have kind of flat screens as well these days, flat touch screens. But I managed to find one with... Nice simple buttons on it that beeps to you whenever you press the buttons. It's only got a few on there. Yeah, it's just got nice simple buttons on it. And as I press the microwave button, it just advances the time by 30 seconds. And I just know from counting the beeps what the time is going to be. Or I can see the numbers on the screen as well anyway. But if mum's using it and she can't see the screen, she can count the beeps. And the buttons, you know, are nice and easy to feel. And there's no turntable in this microwave as well. So, yeah, it's really, really good. So, yeah, it's just... Various things like that, really, just yeah, just make our lives easier around the home. And there's probably other things I've forgotten to mention, but those are a lot of the key things. Yeah, I hope you found that interesting. I hope you uh, enjoyed finding out about some of the aids and things that I use. I will also do a video about the apps that I use as well. I won't do it in this video, though, because it's gone on long enough. And yeah, that's it, basically. Thank you very much for watching. If there's anything you want to recommend that I try out, or if there's anything you want to tell me about that you use, or any skills for Alexa I should try out, or whatever, do let me know. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Do like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you for another video very, very soon. Bye.